Great. Everybody. All right. Hello, everyone. Um, like Jack said, I've been working on launching the Ancient Environmental DNA um, constituent database. We're just in the planning phases. Um, I'm from the University of Toledo. I know we're running short on time. I'm going to try to run through this pretty quickly. If you have questions for me, feel free to reach out. Um, this isn't just me. This has been an effort by lots of people. This um, effort was started by Jack. I'll go through a little bit of a timeline, but there were many other people, too many to list on this slide, that are involved in this process. All right, so I went back through my email to really figure out what the timeline was on this. And the first time that this really came onto my radar was back in February of 2020 when Jack circulated an invitation for a workshop. This was a workshop funded by the NSF to better understand how we can integrate um, sedimentary ancient DNA into cyber infrastructure. And this was to take place in spring of 2020. We all know what happened then. We pivoted, moved this um, workshop online, and it became a series where um, a bunch of people got together, scientists in the sedimentary ancient DNA world, to share um, their ongoing work and how to better integrate this into um, cyber infrastructure. From this, a lot of cool stuff emerged. One of those things was a sedimentary scientific society led by Eric Capo at uh, Umia University. And another one of those things was a Pages um, Paleoecogen Working Group um, focused on past critical changes. And that, um, Jack, is the uh, data liaison for that group. And then uh, we really sort of coalesced around a workshop in June of 2022 at AMQA, where we had um, a workshop for early career scientists. We also had a really intensive working group meeting, um, several people in person, several people virtual. And during that working group meeting, we really spent some time on a publication and then um, uh, also kind of the seeds of an infrastructure grant that I'll talk about a little bit more at length. And then I would be remiss not to mention um, at this point too, in 2022, we lost one of the leaders of this um, working group, Sarah Crump. I put a link at the bottom of this page about um, the, her graduate fellowship in her honor. Um, she was a great and generous scientist and will be um, sorely missed by this group and scientists globally. All right, so where we're at right now, um, we're resubmitting a tree manuscript about um, strengthening global change science by integrating ancient environmental DNA with paleoecoinformatics. This is going in for the second round of revisions, probably next week. And then um, we're in the throes of proposal writing uh, to create some um, infrastructure around uh, integrating these records into Neotoma. All right, so summary of Neotoma data holdings. It is one, there is one site in, and this was um, due to uh, the work of Simon Goring and uh, Kathleen Stuth Leishering, who worked at that, at that working group back in 2022 to really start to match up some of the fields in Neotoma with the data hand, handling that needs to be done for ancient environmental DNA. Uh, is it perfect? Not yet, uh, but we have a lot of work to do and I'm excited to do it, mostly in figuring out just what metadata needs to be in and what metadata can be optional. And this data set uh, in particular is focused on vegetation. This TRNL P6 loop is um, a short fragment that helps to reconstruct past vegetation. This particular record, record is from the Tibetan Plateau. Um, but what is the potential? So there are many, many ancient environmental DNA records out there. This was um, collated by uh, Jordan von Eggers and a subset of the working group to really call the literature, better understand where these sites are and the potential of, of integrating them into Neotoma. All right, so lots of potential there. So what's coming next? Um, resubmission of the tree paper, finishing up the uh, grant proposal. And now I'm just gonna go through some of the high level goals of that proposal. Um, short range integration of ancient environmental DNA records into Neotoma. I spoke a little bit about the metadata. There's going to be some issues um, with sort of understanding shared vocabularies. Um, and then one of the other big sort of difficulties in housing ancient environmental DNA data 
is that there are many different steps in the process of going from sediment sample to a taxonomic inventory. And throughout that process, choices, which can be captured in metadata, are really important, but there's also intermediate products that a scientist might wanna go back to, or a person who's using Neotoma might want to go back to the original um, raw data, which is housed in NCBI. So it's gonna be really important to have this linked open infrastructure between Neotoma and NCBI. And then even within Neotoma, we have to be um, a little bit clever about how we store the taxonomic inference and then the sequencing data because um, from that sequencing data, you can use taxonomic databases to assign the taxonomic inference. And those databases evolve through time as well. So this allows if we keep both the sequence data and the taxonomic inference, that can evolve as these databases evolve. Okay, and then of course, um, like any constituent database, we want to work and build a community um, on data about data governance and trust um, so that we can share these really highly valuable data sets and then um, empower and inspire the next generation of ancient environmental DNA scientists. So long range, what's coming next is to move from this infrastructure, which we've been spending most of the past year just really understanding what this system is going to have to look like. And then we can move to the really cool science stuff, some of the stuff that you've all talked about today, which I'm really excited for. Um, needs and wants. So really we've been spending most of our time um, and focus on trying to get funding to build out this infrastructure. And then part of my role has been to develop this count, uh, global council of stewards. So we're in the process of that also soliciting data con contributions from all of those sites that I mentioned earlier. And then we're really gonna need the uh, expertise of many different practitioners because as I've sort of described how the data gets generated, there are so many choices and those choices evolve with technology as those things evolve. So it's, uh, it needs to be a collective because there's many, many different ways of generating these data and so capturing all of that in the metadata is going to be a challenge, but I think also pretty interesting and fun thing to be involved with. So I think I've uh, maybe recovered a bit of time and you can all continue on with your day and, and please do reach out if you have any questions. Fantastic, Trisha. Thank you for that speed 